Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and last week I took you through a behind the scenes look at my design process for something that I'm working on. So today is part two and it's me applying more of my design from my first step from last video to now, now my second step for this video. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, friends, so today is kind of part two of my design process. So if you watch my video last week, I went through a few different color palettes for a project that I'm working on. I had these three and I asked people to vote on which one they liked best. And honestly, it was very mixed. I had a lot of people who liked this one, this one, this one. Um, so today I'm going to try and go with the one I gravitate towards. Now, when I'm designing something, I don't just, you know, pick it and be like, yep, this is what I'm going to go with. I try multiple things. So I am gravitating towards this color palette the most. So I think I'm going to try this first. And then if it doesn't work, you know, it doesn't work. And I will try something different. Um, I think my second favorite was probably this one. A lot of people said this kind of screamed my brand, which is probably a good thing. I always felt so insecure, like I didn't have kind of like brand colors or something that made people think of me and the fact that people did was kind of nice that knowing that, you know, I have some sort of like staple that I couldn't see on my own. <laughs> so I like this one too, but then this one is also nice. So I don't know. I'm going to give this one a try today um, just because this is the one I'm gravitating towards the most. And then we will see how it goes. So I have this, uh, St. Cuthbert's Mill Saunders Waterford watercolor paper today that I'm going to be working on. I'm just going to see where my paper kind of divides in half just so I can get an idea of the middle of where the crease would be of the paper just for kind of like a guideline um, because like I said I'm kind of designing a cover of something so I want this kind of going around. So really, I'm going to have to kind of go like this and make this T shape. Now, if I said I wasn't nervous, I'd be lying because I kind of am. I don't know exactly what direction I'm going to go in with what type of flowers, but this is all part of the process is trying different things. And I just thought I'd take you along for the ride with this. So I have my paper. I have my ultimate palette here with most of the colors already mixed. So that's nice. Um, but I will go through the mixtures again because I'm going to need to and we're ready to go. So because I want this kind of like large flower here and it's going to be kind of pointing downward, um, I'm thinking I might turn the paper around or I might use this as the front. It's just easier for me to have a flower facing this way than pointing it down. I would, I'd have to tilt my paper. So I think I'm going to do the majority here or just keep turning it back and forth and just seeing what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. Why am I nervous? I don't know. I don't usually let people into my design process. So this is kind of nerve wracking just a little bit. So if I remember the mixes, which I don't completely, to be honest, um, I'm going to just kind of try and color match. I have my quinacridone magenta there or quinacridone rose and then a little bit of yellow because it's kind of like a peachy color that I have here. Nice and light for that. And I'm just going to start by creating this big kind of fluffy petal here or flower here for that top corner, which is kind of like the the centerpiece of this little floral painting. Okay, and it can kind of roll over onto the next page, obviously. Want nice and fluffy. Maybe like a peony shape. Now, one thing I'm really bad at is actually planning. <laughs> planning things out more than I should, or more than I more than I do. I really should plan things out a bit more, but sometimes I just really like to go for it and just not think too much about it. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, so there's that big fluffy peony shape. 
And then I kind of had that, um, what's it called? The burnt sienna as like a shadow color for this. So I'm going to grab my burnt sienna. I'm just going to bring it here a little bit. I'm going to tap the base using this as its kind of darker color in there. I really love these two colors together. And I might go and do a little bit more with this color on here after, like after it's dried. So we do a little bit more wet on dry. I feel like I need a little bit more pinky in there. A little bit more, a little bit of yellow. Okay, and then I'm gonna take that color and I'm just gonna try and bring it over here. A little bit more yellow to it. And I just want these kind of like bud shapes. With some falling petals. And then our burnt sienna kind of touching the base. Yeah, I like it when it's a little bit darker, so I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the burnt sienna. I really do love these two colors together. I feel like I need a little bit more pink, though, in it. And I'm going to start to kind of have some of these buds going this way. So remember, I'm kind of going down and out. Um, so I'm going to create another bigger petal or flower on here. Need a little bit more color, yellow, pink, and just water it down. Now I'm using my size 10 brush. I was using my um, half inch flat brush, which I love, but I, I don't know, I just felt a little bit more comfortable using this one. Yeah, I just want these like fluffy peony shapes, I think. And I'm just trying to kind of evenly spread them out. Like that. I'm going to grab my burnt sienna again. Just tap the bottoms. that. I don't know if I love this. I like the shape. I feel like it's not pinky enough, but I can definitely do a little bit more of a, what's it called? You know, layers and stuff on top. What's it called? You know, layers. <laughs> okay. I think I want the stems to be this color. So I'm going to throw this around. Now we can kind of see, and I'm going to start to create leaves and stems with this burnt sienna color. And I want some of that burnt sienna to be nice and dark as well. The thing I love about this color palette is that I feel like the burnt sienna really complements it. And it's different from my typical green and pink, which I love together. But it just brings something a little bit different. It's a little bit warmer. I feel like it's really light in here. There we go. And it's a bit more of a bold choice because I don't feel like you see this as often. But I really love these colors together. So I'm trying to do a bit more of like a whimsical floral pattern. You don't need to see every um, stem and leaf attached at a specific area. So 
So I'm having these stems, but they're not fully attached because you don't want it to be too bold. You want it to be a little bit looser. I don't know. I really like this. I feel like I need another pink flower over here. that like that okay so now I'm gonna start to build our other colors in there because the green is also really important and then we have that really light kind of blue although I really just love these two colors together okay so let's build in our blue so our blue was like an ultramarine which i love or this is french blue but it's like basically ultramarine had a tint of purple like a dioxazine purple and then i used white to make it a little bit more opaque and i'm just going to water it down just a little bit more i don't want it to be so bold that's not really the hero part it's just kind of an accent here so just little bits Just little bits. Just have a little bit more of the dark blue towards the bottom. And so I'm also trying to keep an eye on like what would show up on the cover page. So just covering half of it. And we have a little bit of the blue here. Maybe a bit more here. Okay, I can always add in more later. I wanna get that green in there so I know what I'm doing. So for the green, I had this like cool turquoise, cobalt turquoise, I think it is. All right, and now I'm gonna use that as a stem for some of these blue Uh, flowers just a little bit but I don't want it to be too overwhelming I'm like trying so hard not to go too hard with this it's knowing when to stop with a painting right you know just when you need to kind of take a step back evaluate make sure the colors the ratios are right but what you also have to remember and what I try to remind myself is it doesn't have to be perfect at all by any means we are still practicing even though you know I'm still trying to develop something I have to remember that this is my first attempt attempt of this painting and you know it might not be perfect right away and it's not supposed to be this is hard because I want to add more green but I don't want to take away from the burnt sienna so I'm wondering if I should water it down a bit just lighten some of them up I don't know. I feel it needs a little bit of that darkness. 
Now I am going to do more layers for a little bit more like on the peony and stuff like that. And the yellow in this color palette is just very, like it's the center of some of the blue flowers and that's about it. Okay, let me just take my paper here and just cover half just so I can see how that front kind of cover would look. Does it flow? It does, and that would be like the back cover, which I like. I feel like there needs to be a little bit more density in some of the areas. It's a little too separate but it kind of just gives me an idea. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my smaller size four brush and I'm gonna grab my pink again and I'm gonna do, actually I wanna flip this around just so I find it's a little easier to work on. Okay, and then I'm gonna do just some layers of some lines more color in there if you ever wonder like or you're someone who worries that the more you do the more you're going to mess it up. I always worry about that stuff. <laughs> okay. I feel like it's just normal, but I always also try to tell myself that if you don't try things, you won't know if they work or not. Right? So you really just got to play around and try to see what looks good and what doesn't. Cause that's the only way you're going to figure it out. So like, is this like, do I want this layered look or did I want like kind of a one layered more vibe to this? I don't know, but I'm going to try this, see how I like it and then adjust accordingly with my next painting or maybe I'll love it. I don't know, but I just try and do little bits at a time. I kind of like that. I feel like it adds a little bit more structure. I feel like some of these um, leaves need a little bit more, you know what I mean? They're just too, they're coming out of nowhere almost. I feel like they need a little bit more of a, a stable base of where they're coming from. Like how it's just not connected to anything. That might also look weird though. I don't know. And my dog's barking at someone. Okay. I do want to add a little bit more into these pink ones with the burnt sienna on the tips. I just feel like it looks really nice. This might be my new favorite color combo is the pink and the burnt sienna. <laughs> it's so pretty. Try to, when you're designing something, like 
try to take multiple steps back in the middle to see how it's progressing. Um, you can get quite lost in a painting by just like you keep going but not actually looking at what you're doing. So I find sometimes I'll have to stop. Well, I, right now I'm filming so I can look at my monitor to see what it looks like from above to see if I like it, if there's any spaces that need a little bit of tweaking. So I find that really helpful. Okay, and then I want a little bit more darkness of the burnt sienna in some of these, like just wonder if I should mix it with like a darker brown just for a little bit of yeah I kind of like that just for a bit of shadow on some of these so I just mixed it with a little bit of burnt umber And I'm just getting the base. Of some of these um, leaves. And I think I'm going to do something similar with the do I want to do that with the blue too? Just grabbing a little bit of the blue. Just putting a little bit of darkness of a layer at the base. Get our green again. So it's a little bit darker. Just so we have that contrast within its colors, you know. like that and then our yellow which I might turn into more of like a yellow ochre I think so it's a bit more subtle for the center of our peony let's turn this around just to see what it looks like okay I like that that this one I'm just kind of tapping with the tip of my brush to get these yellow centers and you can do the same kind of thing with the oops that's too much just a little like that Okay, and now, again, just kind of seeing how it flows. I feel like I need a little bit more brown over here. I'm going to grab a little bit more of my burnt sienna. Just to kind of cover it, just to see. bigger one maybe and 
then maybe a little bit of green there. Just gonna make it a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna grab some of that green, just water it down a bit. So it's not as dark, but it can frame things nicer and just kind of drag it out just by lightening it up. darkness towards the bottom. I don't know. See, this is again one of those things where you're like, how do you know when to stop? <laughs> I don't know. I don't always know how, when to stop. But yeah, okay, I think I'm gonna stop. Am I gonna stop there? No, hold on. I'm just gonna have a little bit more one right here. There we go. Just a little bit more color. There. Okay. And I think that's pretty good for now. Um, I do like that. Uh, but we'll have to see how it goes. So that's kind of like the cover-ish vibe I'm going for. Back cover. I really love this color. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, and if you want to see me attempt the other ones. Because I think that would be fun too. Alright. That's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. Have a great day, guys. Bye.